In today's video, I want to do a little comparison and contrasting of Affinity Designer to Zara Designer Pro. Um, full disclosure, I, I don't own Affinity Designer Pro yet, or Affinity Designer, uh, sorry, uh, yet. Uh, I am evaluating it right now on with a 10-day uh, free trial period. Uh, but in that 10-day free trial, trial period, I've uh, watched a, a number of videos and played around with it quite a bit. So uh, I just want to talk about uh, some things that um, I like better in, in Affinity and some things I like better in Zara because Zara is where I come from. I've um, been using Zara for probably close to 20 years now. Um, and uh, they're both kind of vector, uh, they're in the same space. They're both vector drawing programs. So uh, let's start, I'm going to kind of start over here uh, with the things I like better in Zara and kind of go uh, from the bottom up first. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean. So the first thing I want to talk about are blends. These are things that you can do in Zara that you can't do in Affinity. Um, at least I haven't figured out how to do them yet. So I'm going to take two of these two shapes that I've created, and, and those are also easy to create, and I'm going to apply a blend to it. So I use a blend tool and just stretch uh, um, a, uh, a click and drag between the two shapes, and, and I've created a blend, right? So there are five steps in this blend, and that's five steps between the two shapes. So the original two shapes, one, two, three, four, five steps in between. But you can change that, right? And I can change, change this to 25, and all of a sudden I have a huge number of shapes in between, right? And then I can uh, also select this curve that I've created and select the blend tool again. And then uh, with that selected, I can uh, fix, uh, fit the blend to the curve, right? So there you go. Uh, and then I can even um, hit uh, F4 to select just the, uh, just the line and uh, set that to no line. And then there you go. I've got my blend uh, on that curve, but it's still on that curve, right? So if I were to select um, one of the ends of it, I can, I can change them to your handles and stuff like that. My, I've just created another piece of uh, another bit of curve because I didn't actually get that that was your handle, but there. Uh, so anyway, that's one of the things I like in uh, um, in Zara is those blends. You can also convert those to editable shapes and ungroup them and 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 pull out individual shapes in between. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, one of the things I like in Zara better. The other one is views at multiple zooms. So let me go ahead and minimize this and pull up this Monopoly board. So this is the same document, but I have two views of it. One is uh, kind of of the entire document and one is uh, zoomed in. Uh, but whatever I do to one affects the other, right? So if I were to take this community chest tile, which I have selected here and just delete it, right? It disappears in the main document. I can undo and it pops back in. Um, this is very handy for drawing things uh, in, in, uh, um, at, at a detail level, right? And then uh, seeing how that affects the, the whole document. It, it, this doesn't look all that great on my, uh, on my small little laptop screen, but when I'm uh, working on a, uh, um, my large 42-inch you know, monitor or whatever, uh, that uh, means I have quite a bit more screen space and, uh, and can, can get into a bunch more detail. So in any case, um, that's one of the things I like in Zara quite a bit better. Let me uh, go on to talk about blends, or uh, not blends, uh, feathering, the next one. So feathering is, is, um, is a blurring about the edges. And I'm showing you this on the star right here uh, to show you that it, it, it doesn't matter what the shape is, right? Um, it, it feathers, and you can do this on vector shapes, but it, you, you can't really tell what it's doing here as much. Uh, but what it's doing is uh, leaving the center, um, uh, you know, completely opaque and just feathering, just blurring the edge of the of the shape. Uh, it's not as obvious here, but it, here with this JPEG that I have uh, selected, if I were to apply a feather to that, you can see how the center of it uh, stays clean and sharp while the edges get blurred, right? And I can keep on going, keep on going. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, 
that's feathering and that's not something that I've discovered how to do in Affinity Designer yet. There may be a way to do it, but I have not discovered it. Uh, the next is linking colors. Um, and again, not something I've discovered how to do in, in Affinity Designer yet, but you can have colors that are linked together. So uh, this color right here, this green, uh, is a shade of this green. Um, or, you know, this green is the shade of this green. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So all of these um, icons use those two colors. And because they're named and linked colors, I can uh, um, change one and have it affect the change uh, for all of them. So I'm going to bring up the, the color editor here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the main color and just drop it in there, right? And now I've got that theme color one, right? And this is theme color, theme color one, theme color two. So th see, because theme color two is uh, linked to theme color one, if I were to change theme color one, watch what happens to all these icons. Right? As I slide through the uh, through this color bar, I can change all of my icons at once because they're linked. Right? Uh, so that is something that is extremely useful and uh, uh, very powerful in, in Zara that, like I said, I, I have not discovered how to do in uh, Affinity Designer yet. And the next thing is editing shapes in Zara. So let me go ahead and go here. And here I just have a star, right? Uh, and there are a limited number of shapes, right? You can do a, a rectangle, a, an ellipse, or a, a quick shape, right? And for quick shapes, you can either do, um, let me select this, you can either do uh, stars or, you know, uh, polygons. Um, but uh, with a star shape, one of the nice things about it is you can edit this with the shape editor tool still selected you can edit the curves on it as well right and you can do this a little bit in uh, affinity designer uh, but not as much uh, so let me just undo that so one of the other things you can do is right you can have this you know basically uh, fold back on itself and and make all kinds of wild shapes with it uh, so that's one of the, the really nice things uh, that you can do here. Um, okay, so that's enough of the things that I like about, that I like better in Zara. Let's talk about the things that I like in Affinity. So let's go with the corner tool first. And I'm going to go ahead and just create something here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of boxes and select both of them and add them. So I've got a shape with a, a bunch of different corners. Now if I uh, go back and uh, select the corner tool, any of these corners that I select and pull on, I can make rounded, right? And it's just the individual corner um, that I'm picking, whoops, is being rounded, right? None of the others are. You can do multiples at the same time, right? If I were to um, select these two at the same time and pull them in, I could round them both. Uh, this is a, a very, very handy tool. Um, and not only can you do that, but there are different types of, of uh, corners. So look, keep looking at these top two. But up here, uh, if I want them to go back to regular square corners, uh, I can do that. If I want them curved, which is the default, the rounded ones, right? Uh, I can do a concave uh, corner. I can do uh, the straight corner, just basically uh, a 45 degree angle, or I can do uh, these cutouts, which this is something that, that a tool like this would make uh, a thousand people who use Zara uh, very, very happy because it's something, it would be a new vector um, tool that, uh, that uh, is something that, that they've been needing for a long time. But anyway. Beautiful, something that you can do in Affinity that you can't do elsewhere. Um, okay, next, uh, the shape presets. So like I said, I like uh, the ability to edit shapes in Zara, but the, the nice thing about, uh, um, about Affinity is you have uh, all these preset shapes. So you can do um, a rectangle ellipse or even a rounded rectangle, which you can do in Zara too, by the way, the rounded rectangle. But uh, it has this um, 
huge list of standardized, uh, um, you know, uh, varied shapes, right, which you can grab and just plop in, right? I mean, this is really kind of cool just to have a heart or, or uh, you have to get there on the corner or to go to the cog tool and, and, and create a cog. And, and if you hold down the shift key, you can make it uh, uh, perfectly symmetrical and stuff like that. And like I said, with this, you can do some certain things, right? You can do some edits, right, um, to it. You can play around with, with some of the things, but you can't deform it the same to the same level. Like I can, I can make those bulge a little bit, but I can't uh, uh, deform that the same way I could in Zara, uh, which is cool in its own way, but, um, you know, there, there are some limitations to it, right? Um, not that this is not a, a, a cool tool, but I like the, some of the uh, ability um, to edit the shapes in Zara. I like the amount of presets there are in Affinity. I hope that that's clear. Okay, whoops. All right, uh, then assets, okay. Assets are kind of a cool thing. So if you have something you're gonna need to, to draw over and over again or uh, use over and over again, then that assets are pretty cool. So this is uh, kind of cool. So it comes with, uh, with a standard list of, of kind of iOS uh, um, assets. And there are different things like keyboards and, and things like that that you can do, which is helpful if you wanna to draw an iPad or an iPhone, right? Um, I'm not that big into Apple, so it's probably not something I'm going to use. But um, you have the ability to add your own. So you remember those icons that I showed you before? Well, um, I just basically pulled them all in over into uh, into Affinity and created my own asset groups, right? So all those are now there, and they're part of the, uh, um, the application now. So every time I open a document, these assets are there and available. And I can just pull them up. And anytime I want to drop one in, I just grab and drag and drop. And there you go, it's there. And it's still a vector shape, right? It's still um, uh, available for me to, to resize and things like that. It still stays sharp. Um, unfortunately, those colors aren't linked, right? So but if I were to go back to to my layer gallery, and uh, go down here to the ellipse where the color is, and I could go ahead and change that, right? Uh, so if I wanted to make it blue, I could, right? Unfortunately, I have to do it in, in, in two steps, right? There you go. But I could do that, right? Um, and it doesn't change all of them, it just changes one. So anyway, um, but these assets are really cool. You can make your own. Uh, I also had a bunch of NFL team logos that I had done at one point. Uh, I can, anytime I want, I can grab one of those and just drag it in here and boom, there's my, my Miami Dolphins, right? And I can resize that so it fits on the page better. But yeah, uh, and, and like I said, if you have things like buttons or, or, or things like that, uh, um, for a, a web document, uh, these assets can be can be really helpful, and they can be uh, uh, attached to just that particular document uh, that you're working on, or it can be attached to uh, the application, and you can use it uh, anytime you open any kind of uh, a document. So those are kind of uh, cool. Um, let's see, inserting inside that's kind of a neat thing too. So let me go back to. Um, here, I'll go ahead and pull up a, just a circle, and, and it still has this uh, um, last uh, uh, fill, which is a, an elliptical fill, basically. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and swap over here to um, the web, where I am gonna grab this, uh, I'm gonna copy this image of, of this marble tile, and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna while I have it selected, I'm gonna go up and click this insert inside the selection and then press control V and then uh, just grab that. And you can see that that, that is just, it's, it's 
it is uh, um, constrained to this particular image, right? Um, which is kind of cool, and, and it's it's still there, right? So here I have an ellipse, and then and then the image is inside the ellipse. It's not that you can't do this in Zara, but it's a little bit uh, easier to do inside of Affinity. Um, let's see, and then uh, oh, the uh, sliders for noise and uh, and uh, transparency on the color. So let me go ahead and just delete that, right? And let's go ahead and do this fill. And you know what? I want to make it. Sorry, let me do this. Now it's elliptical. I want to do it a solid color. Um, and then when I go and and play with this, right? One of the things that I can do directly on the uh, the color for solid fills is I can um, increase or decrease the opacity, right? If it, I just want a flat transparency, I can go ahead and affect that right on the color wheel, which is really kind of nice. And what the other thing I can do is uh, um, by clicking on this, this and it's, this is not obvious, right? It took me a while, uh, several videos to, to find this. But uh, if I click on this little color swatch here, it swaps to noise, right? Uh, I can swap it back to opacity, right? Back to noise. But by doing this, I have the slider, which if I, if I slide it to the right, it adds noise. And I don't know if you can, you can see this here, but it's starting to get very textured, right? It's got the little, little lighter and, and, and darker dots in there. And that can be really helpful for um, adding more uh, kind of lifelike uh, uh, things to your to your uh, drawing. So anyway, that's that. So that's uh, that's kind of it. That's uh, I, I there's probably a million other things I could I could get into, but these are are some of the main things that I wanted to compare and contrast between Affinity and Zara. Um, you know, I like I said, I don't own Affinity yet. I'm probably going to just because it's going to be another nice kind of uh, tool to have to to be able to do some things, some of these things that I I, I like a little bit better than than you can in Zara. Um, another another uh, arrow in the quiver, basically. Um, it's pretty easy to use, and uh, and I I like it. Uh, so I hope you found this useful and informative, and uh, uh, I will uh, talk to you guys later.